Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you joining us today. First of all, we would like to express our great appreciation to Indonesia Logistic Association, ALI, who supported and helped us in organizing the webinar today. The webinar will showcase the latest development and initiatives on the Hong Kong's roles as an international supply chain and logistics hub, as well as its competitive edges in the development of the GBA and the benefits that Hong Kong can offer to Indonesian supply chain and logistic enterprises to expand their business footprints and move up to the global and regional supply and value chain. <clears throat> uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Lau Kin Wai, Director General of Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office to give opening remarks. Mr. Lau is the head of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office, which represents the government of the HKSARG in matters between Hong Kong and the ASEAN as a whole. The office promotes Hong Kong's economy and threats interest in the region. Mr. Law, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be with you all this morning. And also th thanks to um, Indonesia Logistics Association for supporting this webinar. So the topic of today is an exciting and promising one, supply chain and logistics. It is of much importance to many countries and economies in the world. This webinar focuses on three of the most relevant localities, Hong Kong, the Greater Bay Area, as well as Indonesia and the region where it is located, the ASEAN. So Hong Kong is an international transport and logistics hub, as well as an international financial and trade center. The Greater Bay Area, Indonesia, and the ASEAN are all enormous markets with unlimited potentials. There are already close ties among us. Hong Kong, Indonesia, and the ASEAN have all along been enjoying multifaceted bilateral relationships in many areas, from trade and investment to cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. Hong Kong is a major source of foreign direct investment for the region. In 2020, our city was the third largest in the ASEAN and also the fourth largest in Indonesia. On the other hand, the ASEAN has been Hong Kong's second largest trading partner for over a decade, and we have been seeing significant jump in bilateral trade over the years. Meanwhile, the Greater Bay Area is a development initiative with tremendous economic significance. It has a population of 86 million. Its GDP is similar to that of the world's ninth largest economy. Since the onset of the pandemic, we have been seeing some seismic shifts in business environment and momentum. As the saying goes, alongside challenges come opportunities. Notably, there's a boom in e-commerce and digital economy and rapidly growing markets like the Greater Bay Area, Indonesia and the ASEAN are drawing a lot of attention. In addition, businesses and investors have been prompted to look beyond conventional developed markets and to take a broader regional perspective in terms of value chain, all these developments have called into play a much greater relevance and significance of supply chain and logistics. To fully grasp the opportunities, one needs capabilities in such important areas as interconnectedness, conducive business environment and investment environment, quality professional services, as well as flexibility and versatility. All these are the institutional strengths that have been underlying Hong Kong's success and uniqueness. With the implementation of the national security law and also the improvement to our electoral system, Hong Kong has come back to safety and stability. Our institutional strengths remain as robust as ever. And the overseas business communities in Hong Kong stay very upbeat about our city's prospect. Hong Kong is an essential component of the Greater Bay Area development for aspiring enterprises and talents both domestically and from abroad. Hong Kong is an ideal gateway and a direct entry point into the huge mainland Chinese market and the Greater Bay Area. These competitive advantages of Hong Kong were highlighted and emphasized by our chief executive in her 2021 policy address and also in the special report on Hong Kong's business environment published by the Hong Kong government last month. There's indeed a lot of synergy among Hong Kong, the Greater Bay Area, 
Indonesia, and the ASEAN. So in the ensuing presentation and panel discussion, you are going to hear directly from the movers and shakers of the supply chain and logistics sectors, their insights and take on the industry's latest trends and directions. I'm sure that there will be fruitful exchanges. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lau. Uh, I would like now to invite uh, Mr. Mahendra Rianto, Chairman of Indonesia Logistics Association. Uh, Mr. Mahendra has more than 20 years of experience as a logistic practitioner. He has a professional experience as Deputy Commercial Director, PT Chitrabati Logistics International. He holds ESLOC as international certification from the European Logistics Association, ELA. Mr. Mahendra, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and very good morning in shiny Jakarta today. After a few days back, we have a uh, bit uh, windy and raining. And I hope uh, everybody, uh, everyone is uh, well by now. And we can still stay positive about the future, Indonesia future and Hong Kong future, of course. Uh, we have been... Uh, that kind of event several times, a few times with the Hong Kong Distribution Center and Pak Hilwan and I, and we have a kind of event in order to promote each other uh, prospects. Uh, we hope that uh, having this kind of event broaden our view about uh, how we could uh, bring about the uh, each other uh, products or invest start to, to be in the, uh, each other uh, locations. At the beginning, we also discussed about how actually we could bring our uh, potential exporter and products to be in Hong Kong market also. So that's why by, by having this kind of event, we could uh, also open up a both side of uh, opportunities and reciprocally so that uh, by having that, then we can benefit it of uh, each other uh, potentiality. Uh, at this moment, I uh, would like to express my gratitude to distinguished uh, Mr. Lau Kin Wai, Director General of Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office, and also Mr. Benjamin Wong, Head of Transport and Infrastructure and Advanced uh, Manufacturing, and also, of course, uh, Mr. Hill one who, who, who make this uh, event possible. We hope that uh, having a uh, presentation from uh, the speakers today, you could also have some insights about the uh, Indonesia situations and also Hong Kong situations. After the uh, almost two years uh, pandemic, they've been occupied our daily activities. Then uh, now we have already been in the new normal so that uh, we will face the future together and of course stay positive that uh, we can develop together. Uh, we hope that uh, this event uh, could bring each other insight and, and uh, inspire us uh, to develop uh, future business in both side locations. And also uh, to all the uh, attendees, thank you for joining us and uh, enjoy the uh, presentations of uh, the speakers and i hope that uh, you can have some more ideas of how about the uh, supply chains and opportunities between two countries thank you and enjoy the event thank you mr mahendra uh, now we are proceeding to the presentation and the panel discussion Owing to uh, unforeseen commitments, Mr. Benjamin Wong, Head of Transport Infrastructure and Advanced Manufacturing of Invest Hong Kong, is unable to join us at the moment. Instead, Ms. Janet Wong, Senior Manager, Logistic and Aviation Department, will take us through his presentation. And Mr. Wong will later join the panel discussion. Ms. Janet, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Um, can you see my screen? The yes. Slide? Okay, thank you. So good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to join today's webinar. I'm glad to share with you the flourishing logistics uh, business in Hong Kong. 
So um, indeed, uh, logistics and trading is one of the pillar industry in Hong Kong. Um, they account for one fifth of our GDP and provides uh, almost 700,000 jobs in Hong Kong in 2019. Um, there are over uh, 4,000 logistics service provider in Hong Kong. So how is the logistics industry doing? Um, in the World Bank's latest logistic performance index, we will see that Hong Kong is ranked third in Asia and only 12 among the 160 regions in the world. So uh, this index, logistic performance index, is a benchmarking tool created by World Bank to measure how efficiently different countries are moving their goods across and within borders. So the high ranking of Hong Kong shows that Hong Kong logistic industry is highly efficient. Here comes another index by Big Shell, Global Connectedness Index. Uh, Hong Kong's ranking in terms of the depth of the DHL Global Connectedness Index is second best in the world. So you see that this index uh, measures the size of its international flow relative to the size of domestic economy. Indeed, Hong Kong's high ranking uh, echo with Hong Kong's economy being externally oriented. Our uh, total value of external trade in goods and services in a year is equivalent to that of three times of our GDP. So we are really good at making money on logistics, right? And no wonder our logistic industry has won a world of confidence by Dick Chow. You see uh, the managing director spoke highly on our, uh, our logistic environment and they are keep expanding in Hong Kong and indeed they're expanding once again the Central Asia hub here. So let's talk about the logistic opportunity in Hong Kong. As our Director General of uh, Jakarta Office, Mr. Law mentioned, uh, e-commerce logistics is the most promising uh, sector in logistics now. The COVID-19 pandemic are reshaping Hong Kong and indeed the world's booming e-commerce. Consumers and employees working from home are now increasingly reliant on online shopping for almost everything, from grocery products to food to uh, personal protective equipment like face, masks, all this. So uh, returns are on the rise, you can imagine, and so is reverse logistics. And the untapped business to consumer index also shows that Hong Kong is very ready to support online shopping. That's why Hong Kong is ranked number two in Asia and top 10 in the world. With this booming growth of e-commerce worldwide has generated an ever increasing demand for cross-border logistics and delivery services. Our airport authority awarded a tender in 2018 to Alibaba Group led joint venture project at airport, uh, Hong Kong Airport to build a future-proof 12-story premium logistics center. The center is about 5.3 hectares with an estimated growth, gross floor area of 380,000 square meters. This uh, design is to handle full array of air cargoes, including cross-border e-commerce, general cargoes, Paris ball, pharmaceuticals, luxury products, aviation supplies, uh, and many more. So with this uh, new facility, I'm sure that uh, e-commerce and e-commerce logistics will go further in the years to come. Talking about COVID-19, the pandemic has shown us public spotlight on the importance of global supply chain. Not surprisingly, food and medical supplies have received the most attention. Since cold chain can preserve and extend the shelf life of these um, temperature sensitive products, so when they move through the supply chain, so cold chain logistics, besides e-commerce logistics, is also benefiting most from the fast growing e-commerce trend. Globally, our airport has been recognized by IATA as a partner airport of IATA Civic Pharma since 2018. This proves that we are in recognition of our efficient and reliable handling of temperature controlled pharmaceutical cargoes. Um, digital logistics, as mentioned as well, is going with huge potential. With COVID-19 pandemic reshaping the way of life, Hong Kong's logistics sector is committed to apply new technology to meet the increasing and evolving needs 
enhancing operation efficiency and productivity. So to maintain global competitiveness of Hong Kong's logistics sector, our government has been very supportive in launching the pilot subsidy scheme for third party logistic provider two years ago. This uh, ceiling for each applicant is 1 million Hong Kong dollar on a uh, one on one matching basis. And the application is year one. So all logistic player in Hong Kong, uh, registered in Hong Kong with substantiate business can apply. Uh, Hong, Kong uh, Hong Kong registered company, so including all Jataka companies interested in doing business in Hong Kong. So when talking about the strength of Hong Kong logistic industry, uh, strong connectivity is definitely a key. As one of the regional hub for Asia, Hong Kong has good connection with most of the Asian, Asian cities and half of the world's population is within five hours flying time. Hong Kong airport is one of the world's busiest uh, uh, air cargo hub and that um, Hong Kong port is amongst the busiest and most efficient container ports. And there are over 40,000 Wi-Fi hotspots in Hong Kong. So we are very, very connected to the world. To strengthen Hong Kong status as an international aviation hub and to cater for the long-term air traffic demand, Hong Kong International Airport is developing into the free one-way system. The reclamation of around 650 hectares of land has been largely completed. And the full completion of the third one-way will be scheduled in two years from now, 2024. So the free one-way system will boost the annual passenger and cargo handling capacity to 120 million passengers and 10 million tons respectively. It will further increase capacity, strengthen connectivity of our airport. So today's business uh, best word nowadays is GBA. Let's talk about this new uh, GBA. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Macau, Greater Bay Area, in short, the GBA, with a population of some 86 million uh, and a combined GBA, GDP of 1.7 trillion US, is equivalent to the world's ninth largest economy. Being the most open and international city in the GBA, Hong Kong is known for its status as an international financial transportation, trade, and aviation hub. Enjoying the due advantages of one country and two systems, Hong Kong plays an important role in the GBA development. On the one hand, Hong Kong will facilitate and support the economic development of the region with a will to enhancing the role and function of GBA in the country's two-way opening up. On the other hand, we will facilitate the development of industry which Hong Kong strength lies in, including logistics, capitalizing Hong Kong's strength to serve the country's needs. Looking at the GBA outline development plan, aviation and ports are a key sector for Hong Kong's participation in GBA. And the plan also emphasizes Hong Kong's status as an international leader in sectors including logistics, among others. The Hong Kong Business Committee now has an, an opportunity to have its voice heard on the GBA, Together, we can come up with policy proposals that will shape the development of the GBA and help Hong Kong and our neighbor continue on the path to prosperity. Indeed, Hong Kong is a top investment destination. Uh, as I mentioned just now, Hong Kong is under the one country, two system. The legal system is based on the British common law system which is familiar to one third of the world's population living in common law jurisdiction or in system mixed with civil law. Hong Kong's business environment is favorable to business. Business and individuals in Hong Kong enjoy the, one of the most tax friendly system in the world. We only have free direct tax imposed and with generous allowance and deduction, which can reduce taxable amounts. We only have uh, profit tax, salary tax, and property tax. And we do not tax on uh, GAT, K, 
capital gains, withholding tax on investment, estate duty, global taxation, and wine duty. According to the latest uh, annual survey of companies operating in Hong Kong with parent companies located outside of Hong Kong, uh, there's an all-time high number of uh, co uh, companies uh, setting up in Hong Kong, it, which a record high number of 9,049, of which almost 1,500 are setting up their regional headquarters. This demonstrates fully that Hong Kong is an ideal place for doing business whether they are setting up or expanding in their business here. In terms of the source country, mainland went first, followed by Japan, US, UK, and Singapore. And among the uh, top four major lines of business, it is transportation, storage, and courier services. Another buzzword, business buzzword today is outside the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Um, uh, this is a regional free trade agreement between the 10 member states of the ASEAN country, including Indonesia, and the six FTA partners, Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, and Korea. ASEAN is indeed the largest FTA in the world, covering about 30% of the world's population and accounting for one third of the global GDP. ASEAN will eliminate import tariffs on most industrial products, which is about 92% of all products. And at least 65% of the service sectors will be fully open to foreign investors with commitment to raise the ceiling for foreign sharing holding limits in various industries. As a logistic hub in the region, Hong Kong is a close trading partner of the 15 outset participating economies, playing an important role in regional merchandise trade transshipment. Although Hong Kong is not yet one of the uh, signatories of outset, most of the merchandise trade initiated and managed by Hong Kong companies is produced in the outset member countries, particularly China. And there's an increasing trend for Hong Kong manufacturers to extend their supply chain from China to ASEAN countries. At the outset, the movement of goods in the region will become easier and the extension of the regional supply chain out of China will be facilitated. And an ongoing trend which will boost intra-industry inter and intra-regional trade. If you're in Hong Kong, if you're in the logistics industry, there's one event which must, you must attend. It is the ASEAN Logistics Maritime and Aviation Conference. It is an annual event in Hong Kong that brings together logistics, maritime, air freight, supply chain management services. They come together to exchange market intelligence and explore business opportunities in the region. Representing investment at the event is Mr. Benjamin Wong, the gentleman on the photo. He's one of the key speakers of the events every year, and he will be joining us at the coming panel discussion session. So before closing my session, I would like to share with you all the latest Invest Hong Kong logistic review. I hope the video will give you more idea about the flourishing logistic business in Hong Kong, and we welcome and look forward to seeing you in Hong Kong. From the shipping channels to the shopping lanes, across borders, cities and homes, in hot and cold, from day to night, by land, air and sea, the world becomes one through the logistic services of Hong Kong. With its history as a trading port, logistics are in Hong Kong's DNA. The city is now a thriving global gateway. That's why the infrastructure and connectivity is among the finest in the world. If you are looking to grow your business, Hong Kong connects. Located at the heart of Asia, 
It connects you to the Greater Bay Area and the rest of the world via a hypermodern, multifaceted transport network handling 4.5 million tons of cargo. It connects you to cutting-edge logistics technology that makes your business more efficient. It connects you to the logistics professionals who listen, share ideas, and find solutions. And it connects you to a complete package of facilities and benefits built for your industry. Our services evolve each day because logistics never stops growing in Hong Kong. We have everything ready for your business. We are the leading logistics hub in Asia. The path forward couldn't be clearer. Visit investhk.gov.hk and get connected to the brightest possible future for your business. Invest Hong Kong, where opportunities connect. You like the music. You like the music. Oh. Uh, since I have a few more minutes, I hope you don't mind. I, I quickly go through the world of Invest Hong Kong and how we can support your uh, world here. Invest Hong Kong is a government department of Hong Kong. We provide free service and support to companies interested in setting up and doing business here. From the planning stage to set up to the launch and even aftercare, we provide a handhold exercise for you. So um, um, I'm not going to uh, give the details here, but a logistics industry uh, do not require any license and it's just a simple registration with our company registry and uh, inland revenue department. And in terms of the setting up, uh, it's very simple and straightforward. And if you are interested in coming to Hong Kong, please feel free to contact our Jakarta office here in blue or us in Hong Kong. We have around the world 31 offices. So no matter where you are, there's someone that will be able to answer your question or why are you with all the support. So thanks once again for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. May I now turn uh, to invite Mr. Hilwan Yogi Brahmanda, Head of Investment Promotion, Hong Kong Economic Trade Office, HKSARG, to be our moderator today for the panel discussion. Prior to his current position, Hilwan is a seasoned corporate and investment bankers working for several commercial and multinational banks such as Citibank, Mandiri, Export Finance and Insurance Corporations, ICBC, and Islamic Development Bank. And he also managed to handle Southeast Asia's investment portfolios. Mr. Hilwan, uh, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, MC, for the uh, brief introductions. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have the distinguished panels where we'll be talking about the trends that we need to keep our eyes on that could directly impact uh, your business. And our goal today is that we, whenever your role is in industries, we are hoping that you would come away with new idea, new fresh perspective, and new strategy that you, you could apply into your business. So now I would like to introduce to our panelists today. So first we have uh, Marco Tibari. He's the CEO of Just China and Hong Kong. So Marco has over 24 years of experience working in a general management, covering sales, trade and development, and key account management. So Marco is currently the CEO of Jazz China and Hong Kong, one of the largest freight forwarding and logistic market under the Jazz Forwarding Worldwide Network. Uh, Marco, it's a pleasure to have you with us. So secondly, we have Paaditya Sari. Paaditya is a cluster head of Harvey Indonesia. Singapore and Malaysia. Paditya joined Harvey in 2012. He managed the performance and profitability of the Harvey logistic operations in the clusters and the commercial team in Asia. His current focus is in growing the business in the clusters countries. Harvey is the lead logistic service provider serving quick service and food services. So third, we have Mr. Kennelly. 
is the vice president of GNP International Logistics. But Mr. Kenny, is, uh, Kenny Lee is unable to join us at the moment. And instead, Mr. Jason Fung, the assistance operations manager, will represent Mr. Kenny during this uh, panel discussions. So GNP International Logistics is an Indonesian logistic company. The company is engaged in logistic and package delivery. And the last but not least, so we have uh, Benjamin Wong is now with us. As mentioned, uh, Benjamin is the head of the transport infrastructures and advanced manufacturing of Invest Hong Kong. So he has the diversified portfolio covering maritime, aviation, road transportation, logistics, energy, infrastructures, mining, natural resource and constructions. And also he's the member of the maritime and port Force Maritime and Port Development Committee, Manpower Development Committee, as well as the Promotion and Event Committee. So we are glad to have them to share their perspective. And of course, Hong Kong plays an indispensable role in the connecting the various parts of Asia into cohesive and comprehensive unit. So on average, Hong Kong's port handles over 4 million tons of air freight and 20 million tons plus ocean freight. So among the top five container ports globally. And meanwhile, Hong Kong acts as a gateway to China and Far East on the sea route, particularly in the connectivity of Hong Kong to the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area or GBA with the local populations of around 86 million. So has, uh, has made the city the largest logistic hub in Asia. And in addition, Hong Kong's free trade policy and civil tax regime makes it easy for overseas companies, including those from Indonesia, to grow their footprints in Asia and beyond. On the other hand, Indonesia is considered to have the largest pool of e-commerce unicorns, which significantly use supply chains and logistic service. And there are abundant of logistics and supply chains companies in Indonesia. Hong Kong can play a part to introduce its unique advantages to global network and to syn synergies in promoting both economies. So without further ado, uh, let me turn to Mr. Marco to take the uh, first questions. Uh, Marco, so just China and Hong Kong has a solid experience in the freight forwarding and logistics market in Asia, particularly in Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area. So how do you find Hong Kong and the GBA benefit your overall business? And how do you project that the Greater Bay Area will be the driver in the global supply chains? Time is yours, Marco. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think we can share a few, uh, a few also slides on this topic, right? Yes, please. Great. Uh, so yeah, we have some 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 thoughts, of course, on the GBA. Thank you very much for the for the for the question. So soon we will upload uh, our presentation to to share. Um, first of all, maybe a, a quick intro on uh, a quick intro on uh, on JS. Uh, Just is a privately owned uh, organization, um, which is uh, having around two hundred more than more than is covered in many many countries with around one point seven billion. Uh, yeah, 1.7 billion uh, top line, uh, as we can start to uh, show now. Uh, so when we go to the next slide, yeah, so so we are covered in, in a variety of offices, uh, more than 5,000 people and 1.7 billion top line for 2020, privately owned by an Italian, uh, an Italian entrepreneur, and it's probably the most successful uh, Italian organization in logistics who managed to grow overseas organically and recently also through, uh, uh, through acquisition. So the company is on, on very much uh, a growth mode. If you can go to the next uh, uh, slide, uh, we can have a snapshot of our coverage in, uh, in, uh, in China. Just briefly, uh, the key numbers to remember is that we have around 700, uh, 700 colleagues uh, operating here. Uh, and uh, uh, we are in 2020, uh, approximately about more than 60,000 tons and 150,000 TU. So 60,000 tons of air and 150,000 TU of, uh, of, uh, of ocean business with also uh, important capabilities that we have in, in logistics and in e-commerce, particularly zooming in, of course, on the, on the GBA, which is a focus of, uh, which is a focus of, um, 
of, of today. Uh, if we go to the next uh, uh, slide on the GBA coverage, I think we knew already that uh, obviously as, as, as it was presented before, we're talking about an area of uh, uh, around 6 million people, 1.7 trillion GDP, which is around more than 10% of the total of the total China uh, um, GDP, and an area that has has gained uh, gained quite a lot over the past few years in terms of uh, share of uh, of uh, of total of total GDP uh, in comparing to other areas in in China. So we can see that uh, the center of gravity somehow is moving perhaps more to the south, and also that the uh, average age, I think, is younger uh, in terms of working population in the south compared to other parts of China. So I think the, the stars are aligned for an even more uh, prominent role. Uh, the next that I think is addressing, uh, uh, so far we just built some context. I think the next slide is addressing the key, the key opportunity that we see on the, uh, on the GDA. And I would like to draw your attention straight on the opportunities. So when we look into GBA, we, we can certainly consider the fact that Hong Kong will have uh, uh, shortly, Hong Kong as aviation hub, right? Has, has already been presented the importance of Hong Kong as, a, as an airport, as a logistics center, connecting the GBA as well. So uh, clearly the fact that uh, there will be uh, soon a third runway uh, will actually help further the capacity of Hong Kong as, a, as, a, as a, an aviation hub. Uh, obviously, I'm not in a position to say when the third runway will uh, will be enough uh, or there will be a need for more, but at least we know it is coming relatively uh, relatively soon and uh, and uh, and it will be a very important development uh, to further cater for air cargo growth. Um, what is very important is the development uh, in, in Dongguan. So what happened is that in the area of Dongguan, there will be a bonded, a bonded zone whereby uh, the Hong Kong customs can, can clear the cargo uh, before the cargo will be then transferred by, uh, by ship to the, to the Hong Kong airport. That, that actually means, again, a greater connectivity, uh, faster time to market for client, and, and, even, and, even, and even more competitiveness, if you will, uh, of the uh, infrastructure uh, of, of the GBA. Uh, another very, very important development, I would say, is on the Zhuhai Airport. Uh, the Zhuhai Airport will be more and more, at the moment, is, is of course, focused on, on domestic, but uh, it will be more and more connected to, um, uh, to Hong Kong to make sure that uh, the, the passengers uh, can access to third and fourth tier cities in, in China uh, can go, of course, from, from Zhuhai uh, to, and from, uh, to and from Hong Kong. Uh, that also connectivity is, is facilitated. Um, you can also, we can also mention that Hainan is another area that is developing as a, as a free trade zone, particularly for, for duty-free goods. And you can start to see the fact that Hong Kong being obviously a free port and, and uh, the specific free trade zone of Dongguan and the development of Hainan can technically give much more flexibility to clients uh, to operate their shipment and for us to serve their needs obviously uh, uh, in a network play between these three different uh, uh, free trade zone, if you will, uh, within, uh, within the GBA. And not to mention the fact that we will have a, an additional runway, again, in the Onco Airport coming soon. I would say uh, there are many opportunities, of course, for in, in the GBA uh, area, but I think those three are probably the significant one that can have a tangible benefit for, for customers. Uh, and therefore, uh, us as an operator in logistics, we have an opportunity to uh, create even more value uh, for the supply chain of our business, uh, our businesses. Um, important also on the on the threat, I would like to draw your attention on labor mobility, uh, simply because, of course, there is a, a, a clear uh, a war for time going on at the moment between China and Hong Kong. The market is quite hot, and there are there are borders. Uh, at the moment between Hong Kong and, and China, uh, let's say a hard border, if you will, particularly considering the recent uh, restriction. Um, that constrains the mobility of labor uh, because we would wish to have more fluid uh, exchange of resources from mainland to Hong Kong as vice, uh, vice versa, which today is obviously uh, um, challenged by the fact that it's difficult to move from Hong Kong and China unless you have special permission then with all the quarantine uh, limitations and uh, and so forth. So we think among the different kind of threats, uh, labor mobility 
is something that we need to keep uh, uh, we need to keep our eyes on. Uh, in terms of weakness, of course, we know that uh, the currency, uh, uh, the capital account in China has always been has always been uh, been there. But uh, would 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 summarize that uh, the, the GBA main deliverables really boils down in the runway in Hong Kong, the Dongguan Logistic Park, the Zhuai Airport connecting to Hong Kong, that network play together with keeping our eyes on the labor mobility. That's our, our short summary of, uh, of a very interesting area that we have in China with a lot of development uh, for ongoing for the GBA and even more so uh, in terms of the, the, the medium view to the medium term horizon ahead of us. Um, the next slide just paint a picture on uh, on on what we can what we can think through um, from a from a just uh, uh, from a just uh, standpoint. Obviously, we can uh, clearly consider Hong Kong as our as our hub, as we're doing uh, already. Uh, we can we can focus even more so on the overland uh, uh, track service. Uh, clearly, as we have between uh, uh, the, the GPA and uh, of course, the South China region, with also, of course, a link to uh, Inter Asia because we have a lot of uh, tracking business that starts from uh, maybe Kunming uh, or, or the South China and then touch on the north of Vietnam and then can reach down to the uh, Southeast Asia uh, area. So it's very important also to consider the GBA as a, as a, as a gateway for the Inter Asia tracking services. For warehousing and, and, and distribution, of course, we are serving a variety of customers, including not only traditional uh, quanta logistic, but also customer having an e-commerce uh, demand. And, and again, uh, the same uh, the same notion around uh, the talent transfer, uh, because we see uh, increasingly Guangzhou and Shenzhen as a, as a talent pool, but obviously again, the labor mobility between between Hong Kong and, and, and the GPA today is not necessarily um, forced by the point uh, in place. Uh, so we are trying basically to summarize how much is important the GBA for us, uh, the, the GBA for us, absolutely a lot. Uh, what are the key opportunities we see? Uh, what are the key threats that we that we observe? And how does our company try to make sense of the current situation by leveraging on Hong Kong, leveraging on on the market service, and keeping an eye obviously on the warehousing and distribution, and trying to as much as possible navigate through the challenge of labor mobility, which is uh, clearly, clearly impacting everyone. Um, I hope I was able to address the question in, in, in the in a level of detail that that uh, obviously you, uh, you or the audience expected. Of course, we're open we're open for for questions. That there's a lot of consideration, of course, on on the GBA. But what we see is that in the past five years, it is gaining even more relevance uh, within the context of the total uh, China uh, GDP. Uh, the working age population is younger. There's more younger share compared to uh, North and, uh, and Central China. So uh, we really see that the stars are aligned. And what is today a 68 uh, or 86 uh, uh, million people area with 1.7 trillion GDP, it is really designed for uh, more and more strong growth in the medium term. That's uh, basically our, our our share on the on this uh, on this part. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your your company's operations in China and the uh, uh, Greater Bay Area, as well as your sharing with us with the uh, the, uh, the strengths as well as the opportunities, uh, what's yeah. happening and the trends in the uh, Hong Kong and GBA. I think this is very important aspect for. For, for us, for any companies, for overseas companies who would like to uh, expand uh, abroad, especially in the, uh, in the in the GBA and Hong Kong and GBA area. Uh, now I would like to turn to Mr. Uh, pa Aditya. Pa Aditya, thank you for uh, joining us today and it's a pleasure to have you with us. Pa Aditya, Halfi is the uh, leading F&B logistics chain uh, and your company has successfully expanded your operations in numerous countries. And would you share with us why your company has presence in Hong Kong and what aspects that you, you think that you should be taken into account when you are expanding your business overseas? Uh, Anit, 
time is yours. Uh, thanks, Bahilwan. And again, thanks for the opportunity for, uh, for me to join this webinar. Uh, before I start, well, before I'm answering uh, your question, uh, if you allow me uh, to share, uh, well, I think it's a, a bit of background on uh, what Harvey is and uh, sharing our business model and our geographical presence. So I would like to share my, my screen uh, to provide a bit of background of that on that. So Harvey is a uh, multinational company uh, based in the US, uh, headquartered in US, uh, but uh, have a huge presence in Asia since the uh, 1980s. Uh, Harvey is an uh, end-to-end uh, uh, supply chain company and especially for the food service. One thing really actually is coming from uh, but starting uh, uh, the all the way until uh, the, the waste management of uh, supply. He operates in more than 100 countries in the world uh, with uh, almost uh, 13,000 employees. Uh, and uh, we have uh, three business units uh, that are uh, pretty much uh, serving the different sec uh, sectors of uh, the supply chain. Uh, the overall supply chain consists of uh, the uh, the freight, international freight management, uh, as well as uh, the local uh, logistics and distribution. Uh, the supply chain business units uh, also uh, consist of the function that perform the supply chain function for our customers. So we uh, 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 we prepare uh, we provide uh, the demand planning, supply planning, uh, uh, supplier uh, 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 and supply quality management. Um, and uh, the second uh, business unit is uh, our sourcing and marketing arms, which is basically looking at uh, how uh, we help customers to source uh, the best products uh, for their business. Our third company, which is actually is, uh, just uh, joined us a few months ago, which is a PMI, uh, which is pretty much a manufacturer uh, of uh, uh, well, drinking equipment, uh, the tumblers uh, and uh, other, other related products. So it's really actually is uh, what we do uh, for our customers, providing end-to-end uh, -end, uh, food service solutions uh, in uh, various uh, geography uh, in the world. I can elaborate uh, what we do, starting from uh, providing customers. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we do the supply planning with planning as well as uh, the supply marketing uh, demand analytics uh, helping our customers on the managing their promotions uh, obviously there's a lot of uh, uh, digital part of uh, these services as we perform uh, with lead logistic provider service uh, to our customers so we cover the overall spectrum of supply chain again uh, from uh, the sourcing part the international freight uh, warehousing and transportation, as well as the inventory management. We also help our customer uh, to source the best product at the best uh, at the right uh, price, uh, and also help our customers on their sustainability initiatives through recycling uh, uh, services as well as uh, waste management services. Uh, the full service, full supply chain service and the perspective of uh, looking at the system, uh, at the whole system rather than a uh, fragmented uh, perspective towards uh, a cost that every element of supply chain actually uh, help us to reduce uh, our customers' food costs globally by about 10%. And it is, uh, well, I think it's increasingly important in uh, more globalized and increasingly globalized uh, uh, nature of our customer supply chain. So what we are uh, uh, talking here, if I can go on uh, the supply chain process, uh, we provide uh, uh, the full from pretty much from farm to fork and beyond. So we can provide from the coming from the demand planning category. 
uh, developing uh, uh, supplier base and uh, pre preparing about, uh, the, uh, the demand planning uh, uh, release order to our uh, our, cust our our suppliers, managing uh, the inventory and also of obviously the physical logistics function when the products come to the country, go into our DC and we deliver it uh, to uh, our customers, whether it's outlets, restaurants, or destination points. At the end of that, uh, we also provide uh, a waste collection, be uh, in the form of uh, uh, used paper, uh, cooking oils, and other, other ways uh, that our customers has. Throughout the supply chain, obviously getting, is getting more and more importance. The, the involvement of uh, uh, digital uh, uh, tools. Uh, so we, uh, we help customers providing the feasibility of supply chain uh, to our customer through various uh, business intelligence, analytics, uh, uh, optimization view, uh, and also uh, monitoring tools. So this strong partnership uh, allow us actually is uh, really actually is, uh, have uh, a long term relationship with our customers because so we know we grow together uh, and also we optimize the supply chain together. Uh, we operate in more than and uh, in Asia is used means in the eastern part of Asia uh, and. Uh, in uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, we operate uh, uh, the full uh, fledge of uh, this uh, global presence uh, really helps us. Uh, one uh, is uh, in helping customer to assure their supplies uh, because, as you know, uh, supplies now is really global; it can come from anywhere. Uh, the second part of it actually is also we help our customer uh, to expand their business in other markets easily, knowing that we have uh, our footprint in those markets. So it always both uh, work both ways. Hong Kong plays an important part, and actually uh, some of our uh, headquarters uh, of Asia region uh, based in Hong Kong. The head of Asia based in Hong Kong, we have. Uh, 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 Control Tower, the freight management operation control tower uh, in uh, Hong Kong, as well as the freight management. Uh, we have a consolidation hub that consolidates products uh, from China, uh, and uh, well act as a postponement uh, hub as well as a consolidate, uh, consolidating hub before the products consolidated and sent uh, into the destination country, whether it's in Asia or in uh, other regions. So with that kind of presence, I uh, would like to please touch on uh, your question, uh, how uh, the role of Hong Kong Greater Bay Area in our international hub status of uh, Hong Kong and Greater Bay Area really provide us uh, uh, not only in obviously I think it's for China and mainly in Hong Kong and Greater Bay Area. And this strong connectivity really helps uh, uh, our customer in uh, not only growing their business, but also adapt to challenges uh, I think that, they, they that they face in the past uh, 21 months uh, during the pandemic period. Our regional control tower, especially on the ocean freight, as you know, uh, we face uh, I think it's a quite severe ocean freight crisis with the content, container uh, shortage uh, in the past uh, one year. Control Tower acts as a balancing, provide feasibility uh, to us as well to our customer uh, on the status of uh, where the containers are. And that helps us uh, combine that information with uh, the DEMA information, help us in decision making process to ensure that all the products, we don't have uh, markets that have too much stocks while the others have uh, a stock up. So we balance that through uh, information coming from the regional control tower that pretty much based in Hong Kong. 
Hong Kong being, uh, I think it's very close to China and as well as uh, in the greater Bay, uh, Bay Area, uh, where I think it's uh, getting more uh, importance in, the, in leading uh, the, uh, the digital supply chain. And we see uh, the strong supply of supply chain talent available in Hong Kong. I think it's a bit more as compared to the others. So this also brings another benefit of uh, having an operation in Hong Kong. Our regional hub, as I mentioned, it consolidating products from China really helps our customer in managing fluctuating demand, especially now during the pandemic. Uh, demand is much more uncertain than before. And that also assure supply uh, to our customer and eventually save the overall cost, improve profitability of our customers. As I mentioned in the, uh, on the talent part, Greater Bay Area also enhanced the, real, the role of the digital technology especially in artificial intelligence, and we believe uh, this technology will be very critical in the future supply chain. Because I think there's a lot of uh, manual works that involve the supply chain currently can be solved, or at least can be supported and helped to be elevated uh, by uh, the technology. Being uh, present in, uh, in Hong Kong and Greater Bay Area, bringing us closer uh, to the avant-garde of uh, that technology and help us to understand uh, the, the advancement of the technology as well as uh, allow us actually to make a better decision on um, adoption of technology. Uh, I hope I, uh, I answer this, uh, some of your, uh, your questions, uh, Pahilwan, and looking forward for the, the discussion that we're going to have after this. Thank you. Thank you, pa. Adit for sharing with us for the Harvey's operations in Hong Kong, in China as well, as well as your, your the main reason, as well as your what you what you see or what you, what you foresee, and the trend as well uh, in Hong Kong and GB as well. Uh, now I turn to uh, Jason. Uh, Jason, uh, I, I just read on the article today that the uh, JT has raised uh, 2.5 billion. So your company now has been a failure around 20 billion US dollars. Congratulations. And uh, we, uh, so could you please share with us uh, your take on the uh, Hong Kong strategic benefits to Indonesian supply chains and logistic enterprise in the greater uh, regional context, uh, because you have a big operations in Indonesia as well as in China. So uh, we believe that the, uh, your, share, your share experience as, as well as the expertise is very beneficial for, for Indonesian companies. Uh, Jason, time is yours. Uh, two years, we are expanding our business to Vietnam, Malaysia. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Kelly from JND International. Firstly, thanks to Invest Hong Kong invite us to join the webinar on today's function. And also, I friends, uh, the Invest Hong Kong give you a chance to introduce our company. Let me simply introduce our company. JMP Express is spread established on 2015 in Indonesia. After two years, we are expand our business to Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines, and Thailand and Cambodia. On 2020, we are coming back to China to develop our, our JMP Express business. And also we are uh, open our Singapore office. On 2021, JNT International was stable in Shenzhen. Until now, we already have the 40th 
markets of China and has been established in China. JND International Logistics is a supply of JND Group that has been partnered in the Belt and Road strategy. And JND Group operates a uh, so business, business layout, powerful international logistics source, and technical advantage. But adhere to our tactics of the logistics as the funding, information as the basic, and in integrating premier logistics resources in industry, JND grows successfully established is the international sector. Our culture, mission, vision, and value. Benefit sharing services for quality results of quality. Let me introduce our JD International Hong Kong office. Although no local battery customer in Hong Kong, but Hong Kong is a big trade board and big trade policy. It did not have the any virus trade good in, good in, goods in and out of Hong Kong. They do not pay the duty. Hong Kong is a special economic solution. Domain by train and free to carry out cargo and transport, transit and processing and long term storage. Import and export goods in the free port can extend from duty and not subject to custom inspection. So, a lot of the goods will be re export or export to all over the world uh, via Hong Kong. In addition, the Hong Kong International Air connect about 220 destinations of worldwide, more than 100 airlines operating here. Up more than 1,100 flights are available every day. Since 2010, Hong Kong International Airport Big traffic ranking is number one in the world for nine consecutive years. Passenger traffic is ranking number eight in the world. Combined the above advantage, the Hong Kong always position as a rewarding company to support the headquarters, the style and, uh, and the customer to improve the fixed space and service at the same time to improve the company's competition and brand good deal for inside and outside industry. These are important. Our major is the air freight and our main mean sea freight. And we also provide a custom decoration service and local truck delivery and also have the warehouse service and on, and China and Hong Kong on the trust on the trust service. This is our certificate. We already got we already got the Harvard member, WC member, RT member, and we are also the RPR member. The below airlines are 2022 PSA part include Hong Kong Airlines, Cafe Pacific, Cotter Airways. From 2021, we are providing a charter flight service from China to uh, to 40 to 40 countries, including Manila, Kuala Lumpur, Yangon, Lahore, New Delhi, Cairo, Nietzsche, London, Lagos, Chicago, Los Angeles, Mexico City, and Bogota. The charter flight service is more safe, stable, and guaranteed. Of the cargo space and flexible to mobilize growth according to the customs needs. Finally, uh, I've introduced the GBA, the Greater Bay Area. GBA is a group of cities that surround the Pure River Delta region of China. There is included nine city and two SAR. Nine cities include Zhuhai. Bosan, Dongguan, Zhongshan, Jiangmen, Huizhou, Chaoqing, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou. And also include the special administrative region of Hong Kong and Macau. The total area is over 56,000 square kilometers. Our population is over 7, 70 million on 2018. It was a region with a higher GDP capital and the strongest economic structure in, in the China. According to the Korea International 2019, Hong Kong investors wide survey logistic warehouse is considered the most attractive asset in mainland city in the GBA with 38% of Hong Kong investors choosing it as their top investment. 
investment choice. By the first quarter of 2020, the stock of high standard warehouse in the GBA reached the 7.7 .7 million square meter. It is expected that in the next three years to 2022, the stock will be increased by 32% to 10.2 million square meters. However, the development speed of e-commerce will reach 60% compare with it, the growth rate of stock still last year with the growth rate of demand. Thank you. I'm very apologize. Thank you, uh, Kenny and Jason, for sharing with us what the GMT is operations globally, as well as uh, in China and in Indonesia as well. So we could see the, the importance of Indonesia and China market for, for GNT operations. So now we have uh, Benjamin. Uh, ben Benjamin is my colleague at the uh, Invest Hong Kong at the uh, Hong Kong office. Uh, Benjamin, we, uh, of course, Benjamin is very active in the regions uh, before COVID-19 struck the world. So I, I, I still remember that Benjamin uh, visit Indonesia and as well as Singapore. So he's very active in the past uh, before the COVID struck uh, of the world. So hopefully uh, today that we uh, have a uh, bit discussions and uh, about the, uh, the Hong Kong show as well as how we, how we could promote Hong Kong for the Indonesian audience. Uh, for Benjamin, so yes. before Hong Kong's role as the international logistic and supply chains hub and the uh, City's competitive advantages in terms of the tax benefit and its access to the global uh, network. Could you share with us, with Indonesian audience, how the Indonesian uh, companies of enterprise could really benefit from the development on the uh, this front, and how much the how much relevant or that it will be uh, for Indonesian. Is this bit further attract investments and to explore new markets and segments? Time is yours, please. Thank you, thank you, Hill Wong. Um, it's fantastic to be here. Uh, apologies for missing the first half of the webinar, um, but actually, um, this is Indonesian uh, market and also Hong Kong market is actually a uh, we believe is a natural fit. Uh, now, uh, I think um, to start with, now uh, I think uh, Hong Kong, we are quite a small city, of course. Uh, we, our uh, space is only about uh, 1,000 kilometers square. Um, so this is actually, uh, uh, but then the market is very dense because I think um, uh, the way I, I put it is always um, you could have a very big country, uh, but then, you know, the activities are actually concentrated in just, you know, the uh, several spots in the capital city, in the major commercial cities. But then the rest actually is very deeper, uh, deep, dispersed. Uh, for logistics, actually, I think um, being dense has the benefit of that you are able to cover uh, the area very efficiently. Um, and uh, sidestepping a little bit, actually, I don't know whether you know Hong Kong now, we have the longest life expectancy uh, for both men and women. And I believe one of the reasons for that is because uh, when there, whenever there is a medical emergency, uh, ambulance and uh, medical help will be able to uh, go to uh, the doorstep of the patient, you know, very quickly. Uh, whereas, for example, let's say um, uh, in a very big country, um, China or USA, uh, you will be able, uh, you will have to travel far to the remote villages. So I think, you know, I think it's kind of like an analogy uh, comparing to the logistics efficient, efficiency of doing it. Um, now, uh, for Hong Kong, now, uh, of course, uh, we are a small city but then the, our volume actually is very big. Air cargo, we are number one in the world, uh, number one international air cargo. Uh, sea cargo container ports, uh, we are number nine in the world, uh, one of the top 10. Um, so you could see actually this is the volume, this is the, the cargo, this is, uh, you can say the blood of the logistic system. Uh, you've got that all here. Now, of course, uh, we are talking a lot about the uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, especially during the pandemic. Um, uh, during the pandemic, there are a few industries that benefited and the e uh, sorry, uh, e-commerce uh, is one of it. Uh, now, uh, 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 setting one, one example, uh, I was at the air cargo terminal uh, about half a year ago, six months ago. 
and um, they were uh, giving me a tour and a uh, big chunk of um, cargo on pallets. Uh, those cargoes are actually um, to be sent to Africa. Um, and those were actually ordered from mainland China on the online shopping uh, platform. Um, so, you know, the, the volume of that actually is uh, very sizable. So these are things that, you know, um, you may not think of, you know, uh, usually, but then actually, uh, uh, because very often people would think that, you know, mainland China can send stuff directly to anywhere. Uh, true. Uh, but then uh, it's also, also about the uh, number of flights, uh, frequency, efficiency, and all. Um, so actually a big chunk of it is sent through Hong Kong. Uh, that's why Alibaba, uh, the China, uh, the uh, logistics uh, side of it, actually they are also uh, setting up this uh, logistics center here in Hong Kong. Uh, now, uh, then besides Hong Kong, we have stuff in China. Uh, we talk about Greater Bay Area a lot. Uh, Greater Bay Area together, um, I was talking about uh, container port. Hong Kong port is uh, number nine, uh, but then com uh, the Greater Bay Area has three of the top 10 ports, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, three of them, uh, together with the uh, uh, international air cargo number one here in Hong Kong. So again, you can see the size of it. Uh, population, um, that actually is uh, 85 million people. Uh, G GPD, uh, sorry, GDP, uh, that is uh, 1.7 trillion US dollars. So you can see the GDP, the cargo volume, the people, you know, all these are linked together because uh, you have that number of people then you have the, that, num uh, that amount of uh, goods and products you need uh, for this population. Um, so um, this is the size of it. Um, now we also have the high speed rail link which help Hong Kong to go into the Greater Bay Area. From Hong Kong to Shenzhen, 14 minutes, one four. Uh, from Hong Kong to Shenzhen, uh, 49 minutes. So actually for this, you can see the efficiency of using Hong Kong to manage the area actually is very high. Um, so again, um, if, uh, actually I always say logistics people are very efficient people and always very busy. So this actually is very important for the logistics industry to be able to be basing it themselves here in Hong Kong and then serve the region. Yeah, uh, and Benjamin, furthermore to, to elaborate and develop your, your, your points. So what, 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 what are the Hong Kong's government's key initiatives and incentives for attracting these overseas companies, particularly in the logistics and supply chain sectors, to really yes. grasp the opportunities and potential presented by the, by the, by the Hong Kong's? Right. Now, we have actually um, a whole stack of uh, information prepared <laughs> uh, that could go on for hours. Now, uh, for Hong Kong, actually, we have um, the government actually is dedicated to support the uh, logistics industry. Now, uh, for example, just one example, we have this uh, pilot scheme on the subsidy, uh, pilot subsidy scheme for third party logistics service. Now, what it does is that um, uh, the development of the logistics industry these days is a lot on the technology. You know, um, technology actually for the industry, it could be two, two, two parts. One part is to support the conventional operation of the industry. So for example, in improving the efficiency, improving the productivity, um, all that. So uh, for this part, actually that will, um, um, this scheme actually will be providing uh, 1 million Hong Kong dollar uh, maximum, uh, accumulative maximum uh, for the companies uh, to actually to apply to the government so that they could make use of the money to uh, adopt technology so that they could improve on the efficiency and all that. Uh, now, this is a matching phase uh, because it's a subsidy scheme. And also the government hope that um, this actually is something that um, the companies, they would have a commitment of doing it also. And the commitment of doing it is also, you know, if um, the companies is actually putting money into one project, then for sure the commitment is very solid. That's why this is one-to-one -one matching uh, basis. And uh, this actually has been very popular with the industry and has been adopted a lot. And then on the other hand, actually it could be on the technology uh, or for example, reducing uh, emission mm -hmm. because nowadays actually uh, being green is being discussed a lot. And um, actually this is all, uh, I think further down the road, uh, companies, uh, if they need to make a loan, get a loan from the uh, bank, um, uh, or that actually um, most likely the bank, because the bank's commitment to the green sustainability actually is very high. So for them, a lot of them has already committed um, to have a green portfolio 
So what it means is that uh, because they need to have a green portfolio, so they will be very forthcoming when you are making some green loans. Uh, however, if your project is not on green, then the banks may not be too conducive and too happy to give you the loan. So over time, then actually getting a loan will be more difficult if you are not green. Uh, so this is something that um, the government is also trying to do on technology side. Uh, the government broad brush overall, we have actually um, allocated $130 billion dollars, uh, for the next few years on the adoption and development of technology. Uh, so all this actually uh, could be applicable uh, to the industries. Um, so uh, now uh, one, quick, one quick word also on the setup of uh, the uh, logistics companies here in Hong Kong. Uh, for Hong Kong to, to set up those companies actually is very simple because in Hong Kong is quite different from other countries. In Hong Kong is a registration system, not an approval system. So um, the uh, company registration and business registration actually could be done over, you know, within just a few days. Uh, and at the same time, uh, this kind of uh, registration actually we could also be uh, kind of like holding your hand to teach you how to do it because um, we are uh, here to help. Uh, we cannot be actually doing the process for you because there will be company secretaries and accountants doing it. Um, but then we, we can actually teach you how to do it. Uh, for the logistics industry, uh, also Hong Kong is quite different. Uh, on one uh, item is that um, there are licensing systems overseas, for example, for freight forwarders and the OCC or that. Uh, but in Hong Kong, we do not have a licensing requirement for logistics industries. Uh, of course, um, fire safety and all that, you have to um, meet with the fire regulations. Or for example, IATA requirements, you have to meet with the IATA requirements. But then from the perspective of licensing, uh, free forwarders or logistics industries, uh, we do not have such requirements. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. So we have uh, moved forward to the uh, Q&A coming from the floors. And I'll try to create two questions maximum, considering the time that we have. So I have one question, very interesting questions. Uh, uh, the question is this dated uh, Marco and Paditia. The, with the current situation of the supply chains, disruptions resulting with the inflation spikes around the world, or around the globe. So how do you think that the technology will take part of play an important role in diminishing the uh, supply chain stress or disruptions. Uh, Aditya or Marco, would you respond on the questions? Yeah, uh, no, thanks. I think, I think technology is playing an important role. On the one hand, we can uh, keep our customer updated on all the different milestones uh, on, on, on shipment basis, uh, which is even more important once you have a, a, a disrupted environment like today where for example, we still see in ocean freight a schedule reliability, which is particularly low, uh, I think on, on the average from 45 to 55 percent. So it's, it's, it's clearly a challenge. Uh, keeping our customer updated via technology is certainly even more important than before. Uh, on the port side, obviously having uh, automated ports is also important to uh, uh, facilitate uh, processes and, and minimize, uh, minimize uh, cost. The reality is that although we have uh, we have technology that help on trading information, also on automatized uh, um, you know tasks, for example at port, the current situation in terms of disruption, uh, particularly in terms of lack of manpower, it is hindering. It is hindering the supply chain, even though you have the technological means to keep your customer uh, ahead of the game in terms of information. Uh, the certain amount of vessels that need to wait before docking at the port due to the lack of manpower. There's a certain amount of uh, track available due to the lack of uh, manpower. Flights uh, can occur, but then you need maybe double crew because of uh, quarantine uh, requirement in different, uh, in different countries. And, and obviously on the air freight, there are also some airlines who are impacted by the current uh, uh, zero COVID strategy, whereby aircraft with bigger capacity are shifted to uh, parts of the world where you have more passengers, right? Uh, which is not the case now for Hong Kong and China. So uh, yes, technology does help, 
Uh, however, the it does help with uh, uh, infrastructure logistic does help between us and customer. But at the same time, we also it's fair to say that the current ongoing challenges uh, in in the supply chain are hard to overcome. Uh, uh, it, even though you have a, a very good uh, digital and technological offer to, to our client base. Thank you, Marco. Uh, Aditya, will you respond? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mayuan. Um, so from supply chain perspective, supply chain provider perspective, uh, the, I think we understand there are things that are outside our control, uh, but we try to focus on what we can control. <clears throat> Uh, the adoption of technology that provides better visibility across supply chain through our control tower help us uh, making a better decision from that. Some example, obviously, I think is we see the, uh, the uncertainty, like Marco mentioned, the uncertainty of ocean freight is uh, well, expected to be continued. It's already happened for many months since uh, earlier part of the year. Uh, what we, we have done basically is uh, really to have uh, a dashboard, uh, to have a consolidated dashboard of uh, how uh, and updated uh, timely on what is the status of each shipment that uh, our customer has. Uh, and based on that information, uh, that allows us uh, to also discuss with customer on uh, what needs to be done uh, uh, to pretty much assure supplies not only from the supply side, but also on the demand side. Uh, so decision on whether we need to, uh, 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 well, uh, 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 transfer some, some of the, uh, 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 the container. On, on the other hand, for example, because our customers mainly in, on the food service, also maintaining uh, or managing uh, the demand part for the, the products that might be delayed, we tell them, hey, why can't we maybe not really promote this product so it's not uh, 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 running up uh, too fast, for example, or of other products actually is available uh, in one country, uh, can we divert uh, uh, the, the pro that products uh, to other country that needs the most, for example. Technology uh, and especially uh, feasibility of supply chain uh, help us uh, uh, to pro provide, uh, to make a better decision. Uh, a lot of uh, uncontrollable, uh, but it's obviously helps. And adding to my uh, answer just now, uh, I think it's at least at the moment, while some of uh, uh, some element of artificial and intelligence uh, still I think is uh, start to be introduced uh, in, in providing descriptive as well as prescriptive uh, analytics uh, in the uh, in supply chain. But obviously, I think it's uh, people behind. Uh, who, uh, who is able to translate that information and making the right decision is uh, still uh, uh, being the, I think it's a key element uh, in assuring supplies, uh, especially to our customers. Thank you, Paritia. So uh, from, 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 your, from your response, uh, Marco and Paritia, so do you think it's gonna be, a, uh, it's gonna be uh, in the long run, so we're gonna experience this kind of situations or or it's going to be in, in short terms since the most of the uh, most of the uh, countries in ASEAN or in, uh, in Europe or North America, so economy start opening up. So economy is coming up. Uh, even though there are some uh, shortages of the labors coming from the North America, but is it going to be a? Uh, it's going to be in the long run. Yeah. Thank you for the question. I think uh, uh, probably we need a, we need to, we need to consult our crystal ball uh, to. Uh, to answer, uh, but uh, I think the general uh, view recently is that uh, it, the situation will probably continue for the first half of the year, and then could ease up uh, in the in the second half of uh, of next year. Uh, we also need to be uh, clear on the fact that uh, the problems are not only onshore. Uh, that means on 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 vessel, if you want if you want to say vessel capacity and uh, and on also container availability. Uh, or air capacity, but also uh, onshore, on, on uh, manpower, manpower for tracking, manpower for ports, manpower for air crews. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double dimension problem. Uh, so economies are open up, yes, but that's not the trend that we foresee for Hong Kong and China. Uh, so uh, realistically speaking, we, 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 can, we can probably assume 2022 will be very similar to 2021, except there will be some relaxation on, on, on on, on flows 
uh, between uh, our passengers between Hong Kong and China, but not necessarily between Hong Kong and China and overseas, uh, based on what we uh, hear uh, over the latest, uh, over the last uh, few weeks. So of course, I hope to be wrong, but uh, we, we, we would imagine a very similar picture, uh, at least until Q2, Q3. Thank you, Marco. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a very similar. I think it's a very big question for everyone. And uh, I think it's, well, when we are entering the, the, the well, it's like a big festive uh, Christmas and New Year. I think it's big, well, most of the manufacturer or, or retailer start managing the, the expectation that may not. I think it's uh, Santa Claus may not be able to to provide all of your your wish uh, to the kids uh, because the product is just not uh, not coming. Uh, Obviously, we, we we don't know how, uh, but uh, we don't know how long it will last. But uh, I don't think it will be resolved anytime soon. Uh, on the other part, while uh, we hope that this will be resolved uh, sometimes uh, in, the, in the near future, however, I believe that I think is the adoption of technology uh, and that the benefit to that thing is uh, will continue and even accelerated. I believe uh, where people see the benefit of having better facility. Uh, having having a better uh, 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 business decision, uh, business decision making process. Uh, so, well, I believe beyond the crisis uh, or beyond the uh, uh, the issues, uh, the challenges that we face with Fortune Free, the adoption of technology uh, and also some uh, new normal practices that uh, we have currently uh, will will continue in future. Thank you, Aditya. So we have lost questions. Uh, so we still have time, two minutes. Uh, this is for Benjamin. So Benjamin, so uh, how how practical is it to set up entity in Hong Kong for Indonesian companies? Very important questions. Go ahead, Benjamin. Benjamin? Oh, Janet? All right, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yes, uh, now uh, the, uh, red, the process is very simple. I mentioned um, uh, uh, just earlier, very briefly, uh, in detail, it's uh, like this. Uh, for the company registration, uh, for the whole registration process, it's a two part process. One is company registration with the company registry. The other part is the business registration with the, our revenue authority. Now uh, for the tax authority. Now for the um, company <coughs> registration, uh, first thing you need to do is to check whether your name uh, plan to use in Hong Kong is unique or not, because the name cannot be duplicated, right? Um, so there is a very simple um, name checking uh, function on the website that you can do that. Um, then uh, that will be the uh, registration process. Uh, it will take only a few days um, and usually, you know, you can do it uh, either by yourself or by your accountant. Uh, we believe accountant actually is uh, easier uh, because uh, they do it every day, whereas you do it, you know, probably, you know, just uh, once for every one, many years. Um, so um, the, of that actually, of course, uh, then you have to specify um, your shareholders um, in Hong Kong, actually the shareholding. We do not have a capital uh, uh, requirement on the uh, company, so it could be just one dollar per share. Um, and then, of course, uh, you need to have details or information on the uh, directors. Um, but uh, uh, also, um, we do not require the director to be a Hong Kong citizen. It could be somebody from Indonesia. It could be somebody from other countries. Um, and then uh, we need to have um, a contact information of the uh, company secretary um, that could be um, somebody in the company or that could be the accountant or your, your accountant um, and uh, we need the uh, telephone number of that. Um, so the whole process is very simple. Um, and of course, you specify your uh, business um, uh, uh, nature. Um, then of course, I mentioned there is no licensing requirement for uh, the logistics um, industry. Uh, but then, of, of course, for some others, for example, a bank uh, or something, then there will be other licensing requirements. Uh, that's uh, for the company registration. And then there is the business registration is 
a very quick over-the-counter uh, process. Um, so uh, what it does is that uh, to register your company with the tax authority so that they know that you are operating here in Hong Kong and you may be uh, uh, you may need to pay tax um, and file a tax return. Um, so for sure, uh, when you do the business register, you need to um, file the tax return uh, every year. Uh, but then, uh, of course, uh, whether uh, uh, you need to pay tax or not depends on the situation, right? So in a nutshell, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. So that's all, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for the speakers, panelists. Thank you, Marco, Aditya, Benjamin, uh, Jason, for sharing your experience and and your insights in Hong Kong and Indonesia and GB as well. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, our audience have benefited from, from the vibrant exchange uh, what we had. So just I want, just want to recap our discussions. So Hong Kong plays uh, an important role as the transport hub for the those in the logistics business. So many companies are benefiting from its strategic locations particularly along with the development of the Greater Bay Area. At the same time, Indonesia offers huge market in the sectors and there are abundant of logistic and supply chain companies in Indonesia, which have not been fully explored in overseas. So therefore it is unsurprising that both economies can work together on the development of logistics and supply chain business. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so may I thank you for your participation in this thank webinar. You. Now we have come to the end of the webinar. We are indeed enthralled by the tremendous synergies and potentials in this logistic and supply chain business between Hong Kong and Indonesia. And so do you have any further questions? Of course, we have several questions that we have not been answered. So I just want to make sure that all the questions will be answered uh, directed to your emails and all the questions will be, will be sent to the, uh, uh, the panelists that you have, uh, that you need to be, uh, to be responded. Uh, so please do not hesitate to contact us at the email that we have provided in our contact details. And we have another uh, videos coming from GND before closing up this webinar. So see you in our next event. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, Aditya, Jason. Thank you. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It's one of the famous Euclidean geometry axioms. How to provide logistics conveniences that optimally assist our customers in fulfilling their shared aspirations. J&T International Logistics has been searching for the ultimate answer to this question. Pas du tout, pas du tout, ce n'est pas mon style ça. 
这么多衣服，我该怎么送到地球的另一边呢？我有办法呀。